take your photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have people wanting to take pictures with you. Because my hair. They love your hair, Jess. <laughs> All right, she's going to come take a picture with us, too. <laughs> In the last episode of World Towning, we enjoyed the cotton castle wonder that is Pamukkale. It's freezing, but I wore my bathing suit, guys, and I'm not going to come here and not strip down to at least half of my bathing suit and enjoy this and have a good time, even if I'm freezing my butt off. We're now heading east to Konya to explore the home of Rumi and the whirling dervishes. We are on our way to Konya, the land of Rumi, the land of whirling dervishes, the land of love poems, and also the land of the most conservative city in all of Turkey, so they say. But before we get there, there's a campground, of, not even campground, it's like a park, like a big park in Konya that we're going to stay at. It is 100% free and we're super excited because we hear that it has hot showers, it has electricity and security. But we're we're going to stay a month here. For some uncanny reason, we seem to not be able to avoid bad weather, and oh, that includes snow. Look at this, right here. There is snow. There is snow. Sorry, compose myself. There's snow right here. There's snow over there. There's snow coming down from the sky. There's snow in April. It's not April. It's like March 30th. I'll go back to the same question. Why? Why is there snow in Turkey in April? You realize it's snowing outside, right? I'm ignoring it. You're ignoring it. I'm pretending I'm in my bikini and I'm in some place really warm. But yet you're still gonna take a shower. I, because I don't know when my next shower is gonna be. I have to take them when I can get them. That at least is a very practical sense of avoiding that that thing's gonna freeze your feet off. Oh God. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. We did not count on this. We did not think that there would ever be such a thing like foul weather in Turkey. And that sounds so crazy. Why on earth would I not think that? It, it can, it's been following us everywhere we go. All right, I'm going for a shower. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. I'm just gonna sit here in front of the heater for a couple minutes first. There you go. You know the water, the water's hot here. That's one the one advantage of this free campground in Turkey. If the water wasn't hot and it was snowing out, there was I wouldn't shower for a month. I don't I don't need to shower that bad. In the meantime, the kids are outside. They're throwing snowballs. What are you? Dad! What are you guys doing? Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Oh my God! Hey! 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 Seriously? Oh my gosh! We don't need more cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you take a shower in the middle of the snow? <laughs> no one wants to take a shower in the middle of the snow. What are you doing? Oh Quick, God. get warm. I'm dirty. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. You okay? Yes, yes. Was it, was the water hot at least? Oh, I'm going in the bathroom. It's the warmest room. Goodbye. Oh. Okay. It is cold and nasty and rainy and snowy and we're not complaining. We got hot showers. We got hot showers. We got water, electricity, and totally hooked up at a pseudo campsite for free for a week. So, and this isn't gonna stop us, you guys. We're not gonna sit around by the fire and drink hot cocoa. We're going, we're gonna see Konya today. Snow or no snow. Are you ready? We're going out into the yeah, freezing cold. Take. Look at Largo's ready. He's ready to go. All right, three, two, one. No! Oh, it's, cold. it's cold. Oh my gosh, it's cold. it's cold. Whoa, it's cold. I feel like I don't even have pants on. Muhammad al-Abdu wa Rasul, kani basile da Rabbi Dini, shama tulla mizin. 
Welcome to Konya, Turkey, the coldest place we have visited thus far in the RV. We have every ounce of clothing we own on right now. <laughs> All right, so Konya is also considered Turkey's most religious city. It has 1.2 million people that live here. And my favorite part, it is the burial place of the great philosopher and love poet Rumi. And he is by far the most popular poet that you ever want to imagine. If you want to fall in love and you want to talk to your special one to say how much you feel for them, I love you by the way. <laughs> I love you too. And if you stick around to the end, we might even recite some of his famous quotes. La la la. First stop, food. food. And maybe hot chocolate or, oh, salop. They have salop. I'm going to have that again. It's a hot, yummy drink. They don't have orchids. I had it without you. I cheated on you. <laughs> Choosing meals as a family is always a bit of a challenge because everyone wants to try something different, but yet somehow everyone wants to try the same thing. So we and I can't are. stand wasting stuff, so I usually just let everyone order and then I'll eat some of their stuff and then if we need more, we order more. This place seems to specialize in two things, kebabs and pizza, and that's about it. But Turkish pizza, so not just any type of pizza. They do it differently. It's kind of more, well, you'll see it when it comes to We're really excited for pizza though. We haven't had pizza in a while. Oh, you guys couldn't choose something different? <laughs> we want to see different food. What's, Sorry, Dad. What, what is this? This is radish. Turkish name, turb. Turb. Radish. Oh, it's a radish. Okay. Now we got to try these peppers right here. I'll take they... a piece. Oh my god. They just bit right out of it. <laughs> they normally serve you hot peppers. That's part of your opening message. They're really good. They're, they're kind of spicy. How'd you like the peppers? Hey, no. I, <laughs> I had to chase it with some lemon soup, lemon lentil soup. That's a lot of food. Absolutely not. Yum. Thank you. I'm gonna grab this. This is Turkish style pizza. That's like some Turkish crust. That's lunch. Turkish style crust, yeah. <laughs> All right, here I am modeling Turkish pizza. So they cook it in long flats and then they chop it up into smaller manageable pieces and it's curled up on the edges. You can get it in cheese and then with different kinds of meats. I haven't seen any with vegetable yet, but we're, we've only just begun and it is absolutely delicious. And in this plate, we also have as well as the kebab. So they bring you like a big appetizer plate, which comes with all of the actual bread and, and the meat and so you good. lay it all together and you throw in the veggies and it becomes like a, a little mini pepper. sandwich. It is just what we needed because we haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> so one of the things they do after dinner is over, they, they douse you with perfume. They call it perfume. It's actually, it's like a cologne, but it is ceremonial because it's supposed to just help you just end the meal with a great scent. Although I like the scent of the Turkish food better, but this is really good too. And since we showered today, you don't really need it. I'm going to just put in my hair. How about this? I'm going to have perfume oh. yum. Come, come, to, come to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My allergies are going to be all over that. This is, this is Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm gonna walk outside feel like a brand new guy. So the market area in Konya is just like this. It's open air. It is really just friendly and inviting. And each street has kind of a theme. So there's the shoe street, the jewelry street. We're currently on the hardware street. We found the nuts and candy street. What I love about this is that it is what it seems like. It is truly like a local sustained market. So there may be tourists here. There may be not. We didn't see a lot, although seen, it is. I've seen like maybe four. I know. But Will and I love this. We love to be in situations where we are hanging amongst the locals and seeing what they're doing and don't feel like it's super touristy. It feels authentic. We feel alive even though we're freezing. <laughs> Do you speak English? A little? What are these? It's sugar. Oh, it's just sugar? Yeah. And you just eat it? Yeah. Ah, I see these every place. Candy? Can I get some candy? Please? Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Oh my gosh, I love them. I had them before. Mm. Where are they? They're so good. What would you pick if you had to pick one candy? Candy store. Okay, you think you the can't entire pick one? The whole candy store. <laughs> You're planning on these look like Christmas. Look at these. These are fun. Okay, those ones look like candy canes. I'm gonna get these for our Patreon people that get the goodie bags. Look how cute these are. We have a weakness for candy. We came in here for one thing that I've seen at all the stores. I'm like, we gotta try it. And can you tell that we are kind of channeling our inner Christmas? <laughs> 
what there is really a lot of, more than anything else is like there's a lot of honesty or at least a lot of trusting so while we're walking around we're walking by tables of restaurants that has water sitting on it and there's stuff being left outside there's bikes going around everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and what you'll notice is that people leave stuff outside and not even care whether someone's gonna take it because generally no one takes anything here yeah, yesterday we were at a store that was closed down for an hour and they had bags of chips sitting outside and and I don't know whether people are just scared to death or the fact that just it's just ingrained in the lifestyle where no one it's very honest yeah it's very honest culture I like it a lot I like it too <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I was just having a conversation with Daddy about how I love the feeling of being someplace new and exciting and not really understanding the food or the people or the culture. How do you feel about that? You've been traveling for a long time now. Does it just feel normal or does it feel interesting and exciting when you see new food or something? It feels kind of normal because I mean I've seen interesting, exciting fun all that billions of times and it's just normal it's just normal for you how about when we go to asia and we eat like monkey brains and stuff like that is that going to seem normal i will not eat monkey brains <laughs> i'm putting that on note <laughs> note <laughs> jessica's on a mission right now i had to get my boots fixed these boots have been fixed in morocco they've been fixed in the united states they've been fixed in spain and they're still kicking Hello. 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 Do you speak English? <laughs> okay. let, me, let me show yes. you my problem. Getting my boots fixed. I'm so excited. I need new, I guess, insoles in my boots because when I walk in them, they go like this as I'm walking. It gets really uncomfortable and then I have to stop and take my boot off and fix it. It gets really annoying for anyone with me. So I think they're just going to give me new inserts to place in the boot. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. What's your name? Mustafa. 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 Ramazan. Ramazan. Mustafa. Mustafa. We're all getting to know each other. I know. <laughs> Over shoes. Shoes are the bonding experience. Oh. Oh my gosh. It's so much better. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like they're brand new. That was so cool. Don't tell me that wasn't that cool. That was pretty cool. I was like, they got that oh, done really quickly. He was we quick? We just came in with no appointment. We had no appointment. He noticed even something on Will's shoe that needed a fixing. And I am so happy that I don't have to take these boots off anymore. I guess. <laughs> you really do love those things. I How do love you it. had them for? Forever. So one of the interesting things about this place is that along the, this area of the market there are people who run and get tea and they sort of they bring it inside the stores and they basically run out from what it looks like uh, like a second story kitchen. Did you order and, us some tea? And, Did and you order us some tea? Stop talking. Did you get us tea? Yeah, we're getting tea. <laughs> so it's really awesome because basically if you tell one of the runners that you want tea, he'll say, where are you? And then I'll bring you tea. Right now we're outside. We're kind of cold as you can imagine. And so a hot tea would actually serve perfectly. How do you do? Thank you. Oh, look how pretty this is with the thing underneath it. <gasps> I am so in love with this concept that you could just be walking down the street and you could get tea from someone. And then he tells me, I'm like, another thing to say about being so honest here, I said, what do I do with it when I'm done? And he's like, oh, just put it here. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I gotta take a picture. Sorry, Will. It's okay. Evelyn, how's my tea doing? It's my tea now. What? <laughs> So our next stop is the Mevlana Mosque. And if you look right back here, there's that beautiful turquoise dome. That is what it's known for from the outside. It's stunning. But inside is actually where Rumi is buried. Rumi, the great philosopher and love poet. And this is why people come here. They come here to pay homage to the reason why love is still remembered in poetry. Now, granted, there's been a lot of poets out there, Shakespeare, but Rumi, I think nowadays he's probably even more relevant as a philosopher. Now, Rumi was actually born in Afghanistan. His dad 
who is a Sufi teacher, which is, comes from the word Sufism, which is an inner dimension of Islam. Now, it's not necessarily just like Sunni or Shiite Muslim. It is all dimensions of Islam. And what it means is you want to become a better person. You want to go ahead and act as if God is watching all the time. Call it off and don't look back. Take me off this lonely track. We're now in the museum that is dedicated to Rumi and shows the life of the dervishes and the mosque that is containing the sarcophagus. Yes. And I'm just gonna jump in here with a little, a little bit of Rumi. He says, your heart, your heart knows the way, run in that direction. Sounds like our travel life. <laughs> this, is, um, this is an interesting place to be. Will and I have had very, very limited exposure to the Middle East, to Islam, um, outside of Morocco. This is pretty much it. And I am, I feel alive and inspired because we don't know about this and I feel so intrigued to learn more. And I, I, I'm pinching myself right now just saying, wow, you know, we're so lucky. We've been doing this for on our fifth year and, you know, we know so little still. We know so we little. really know so but little. looking at everyone else and the amount of faith that they profess and the way that they just stop at Rumi's tomb, and just yeah. throw their hands up in prayer. It is, it's very moving it's to really see how how much they just they just they're moved by the legacy that Rumi had on their lives. It's really moving. It's so we didn't talk inside. We took footage, but we really tried to be very quiet and respectful. You're getting our thoughts now and the experience, and it was it was pretty powerful. I'm so grateful at this point that we're traveling. Me too. And I'm so grateful that we're learning this now. Me too. And we're doing this with our kids. I'm sorry, this I is feel, not, this is not. I'm feeling a little emotional. It's not a rant. But, <laughs> I'll get my eyes up watering. But this town, which is supposed to be the most conservative town, I have found to be the oh, most open and it's, friendly town. It's so full. I am, I am getting a little teary-eyed. And, and full of just emotion that yeah. everyone just comes in here and just comes alive. Comes alive. <laughs> So before Will starts to break down too, um, we're gonna give you a little bit of facts. We get very serious when we say the facts and no tears happen, right? Yeah, exactly. As it's snowing again on us. So Rumi is essentially the, the founder of the Whirling Dervishes. Now this is not like a circus act, this is like a real thing. When Rumi was mourning his, his best friend's loss, and his Shams. name thing was Shams, uh, he was lost in himself. And he could not even think, he could not focus, and all of a sudden he found himself just twirling around a, a, column. a column. In circles. Twirling and twirling and twirling, and then all of a sudden reciting poetry. And this poetry was just so unbelievable that all just of his just flowing out of him, just like coming out of him, he had no idea where it came from. That all of his followers essentially said, I need to write this stuff down because I don't know where I'm gonna hear it again. And this became how the inspiration occurred for Rumi and all of his poetry and all of the loving and thus became the Whirling Dervishes. Now we're going to go see that tonight. So right now, after all of that we've seen with the mosque and with Rumi and everything else, tonight is Saturday night, and they have a special performance. Actually, it's like every Saturday night, but we're gonna see some dervishes whirling. We're not gonna go with Jessica, we're not gonna go with Avalon because they have a prior commitment and they could make it, sorry, but we are taking their place and I'm really tired and cold and I'm crouching because Largo's in this and I wanna get him in the frame. You ready to see some dervishes? Now I'm in the frame. <laughs> okay, we gotta go.
So Konya is done. Rumi, the whirling dervishes, the market. The food. That was wow. a cool place. I um, really liked it. You know, and it's funny because it wasn't a place we were originally going to go um, because we were worried about time. And I'm so glad that we made the time to go. It was interesting. Will and I were, were really curious about different types of religion. And this was something that was completely foreign to us. It blew us away. It really did. It was fascinating. We thought Konya was going to be Rumi's temple. Yeah, that's it. Is it his, what, his, his mausoleum. Mos right. And, and that's it. But... It turned out to be so much more. Yeah, we learned a lot. So, so our question for th this vlog is: Do you guys explore different religions as you're traveling? Are you, are you put off by it? Are you interested? Are you curious? Um, you know, do you do it? It's such an aspect of human nature that it's almost hard to ignore it. Because if you if you do ignore it, then it's, it's just about food. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's, cheese. And cheese. <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see Onward. you guys next time. We're heading to... Where are we going? We're going to Cappadocia. Cappadocia. We're going to go see some balloons. Yeah. Awesome. Bye. Bye. In the next episode of World Towning, we head to Cappadocia and realize that finding a sleeping spot in the middle of the night is not as easy as it sounds. We are at the point right now where we're actually heading down to a spot which we were told that gets the most magnificent views of the whole Cappadocia air balloon fiesta, whatever you want to call it. Um, the problem is we're driving and we're getting in there in the middle of the night. It's 10.30 at night and um, it's raining. And this is supposed to be a spot that is unknown to most because it's like overlander people. I'm coming, Will, I'm coming. Don't move. All right. I should be doing a better job of recording this, but I'm so freaking out right now. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications icon to ensure that you get all of our episodes the moment they are released. This snowman is bigger than you. No. Yeah, it is. No. No, it's bigger than you. No. It's kind of bigger. Look, it's bigger than you. No, I refuse. No. Why don't you like put your arm around it? Like act like it's your best buddy. Because if I do it, I'll fall over. You almost already fell over once. Okay.